that, that was like day two of it. Like your brother brought up getting a lawyer and she immediately escalates to Hitman. <laughs> Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm old man Vin, here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia. I'll be switching the bits, driving, piloting, just moving things around, trying to keep it from crashing. Joined every week by the man up north, one Jordan Swang. He has a mysterious switch in his house. We don't know where it leads to, but maybe it goes all the way across the pond where one Pedro Mateus is staying up late, past his bedtime, thinking about Dark Souls, probably. I mean, just Pedro, well, a mysterious the Shadow switch. of the Earth Tree is coming out in June, so... <laughs> it, like, anytime that, like, you're just chilling out, I assume, at, like, some point you just start dodge rolling in your head. Is, is, Pe- is Pedro, like, the Wolverine meme where he just, like, is staring at the photo of just, like, a copy of Dark Souls? <laughs> I mean, I have the Dark Souls 2 uh, Collector's Edition statuette thingy, so I can just, you know, cuddle that. And then Nori yeah. gives me the weird look, and uh, they carries on. <laughs> well, are are you excited about the um, Dark Souls? Uh, it, you played Elden Ring, didn't you? Yes. Or are you going to um, like get into, because, you know, I saw some of the screenshots here. I posted that in Discord. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I am very much, that's, uh, the Shadow of the Earth Tree, like, uh, puppet lion thingy. Uh, I, I, I look forward to it. I have 300 hours in Elden Ring, and I have a character that's just about the right level to get into the, uh, content that DLC supposedly brings, so I, I... Is it gonna be, like, um, traditional from software, like, have fun finding where the DLC is? No, the, the the they said right from the get go where to, <laughs> where to go and what that kind of takes the for. fun out of it, doesn't it? Right, like a little bit. I I I, I, pay, I paid like to do that. forty fifty dollars for this DLC, but now you got to go find the shit. For like Dark Souls one, uh, they had to tell people because there's no way in fucking hell that you could have figured out like the seven steps leading up to. Manus grabbing you and bringing you into the past. <laughs> I mean, what did from, from software like look at frog fractions and like we'll have some of that? <laughs> no, you just you just need <laughs> to like crouch beside this wall and then the hurricane will come and take oh, you to right. the secret area. Right. You just needed to call Nintendo Power. Even, it's not, it's not <laughs> even, even when you think about that, I watched uh, Maximilian dude go through his first playthrough the, of the cooler uh, Pedro Zelda on NES, <laughs> and there's some legitimate bullshit in that game that. Only an eight-year-old with infinite time would have stumbled across given enough typewriters. Right, and and, and again, it's all it's all to funnel you to like the Nintendo yeah. hopline or to buy a Nintendo Power subscription because just straight up they would tell you what to do with that. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I smell like elite coconut is. Do do you? Is, I do. Zoom tight. Coconut is. Did you did you like? oil and lather your body I, and like I normalized it extract. it was bugging me before the show go home got a shower and i'm like oh cool right i bought that white flavored whatever uh head lotion the uh, conditioner and i'm like i bet that's gonna be coconut yeah that's coconut all right let's try that that's really coconut very, very coconutty, like, like almost very just coconut oil. It, it should have just said cripplingly coconut. I'm like, oh man, like this stuff's giving me a headache. So I that know. explains the pina colada shirt. Yes, um, very, very tropical. Maybe there's some part in like my little lizard brain that was like, yes, but on the festive shirt. That way, you know, when they find the corpse, when you die of coconut poisoning, um, <laughs> dying of coconut poisoning is just getting smashed in the head with a coconut repeatedly, dude. I forgot how bad it was, and when I got up, go get something to drink, you know, go hit the washer, and I like I walked back, and I was like, "Oh right, oh it hasn't left here." I shut the door and went to the other bathroom. <laughs> That's my story. Oh, I am working on the uh, elite desk. Uh, really cool piece of kit. Uh, maybe by the end of next week, <laughs> we'll have that done. I've been uh, I got all the stuff recorded for it, and I'm sticking together. I'm doing the first rough cut. Fun times if you're looking for a little powerful uh, piece of kit to do everything but 3D gaming on. I'm going to say. Maybe look at Elite Desk 705. 
because they're still really cheap. And when they're gone, those things are going to be gone. Jordan, anything exciting happened to you this week? Well, I stuck my head into the unknown, and by the unknown, I mean the ceiling in my gym. Nice. <laughs> that, that, this, is that why I, this is why I like you. you. You don't have a problem dropping the occasional humble brag. Yeah, I did myself a pull-up, <laughs> and I pulled myself into the ceiling at first. And, the, and I'm, I'm an adult with a job who, who dresses and clothes himself and somehow mm-hmm. pays, pays his mortgage. So Can you do nah. a one-arm pull-up? No, oh, really? I'm, I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to break, um, I'm trying to break it, uh, break uh, three sets of five pull-ups in a row. Okay. That, that's, that's, that's my goal. I can, I can, I can pretty reliably do three by four, but three by five, add, adding, adding that last rep is a little tricky. Yeah. Like in this body configuration pull-ups, I'm just like, do I get bored? Mm. No. Do you do I, them like... Front hand, or do you do the? Uh, well, so I was doing them like uh, like pronated grip, but uh, the the bar I got is like one of the ones that has like the multi grips. Mm-hmm. So now now um, actually I, w- I was doing like underhanded for a while, but now I can do uh, I can do neutral. Grip. That's All right, be nice. yeah, I was fascinated with how easy it became to do pull up. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna pull up like this, is... and but the reason I bring that up, if we gave the horse opposable hooves, do you think there's a chance it too could smash its head into the ceiling? No, I don't think it will ever leave the floor. It's just not motivated enough to do anything except ooze. It's the Steam Updates of the Week. You know, the horse might die, and then what will happen to it? We don't know. But Val, the horse Val, came Val, back the very next day. But <laughs> man, that is some ace Canadian content, man. The cat came back. Um, yeah, but it's got a much more pet cemetery overtones to it this time. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you, you gotta listen to the macabre version of it. But yeah, so the question came up in the Steam forums. What happens when I die, Gabe? Do I get to, like, ascend to heaven and nestle myself in between your heavenly areolas? What happens to my library of Steam games when I, in fact, croak? Can I will them to a next of kin, relative, friend, etc.? And we got an answer. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, you You cannot. Uh, once, once you, th- th- those games are linked to your account under your name and, uh, Valve provides no method of, uh, ownership transfer. Their terms of services do say that, um, they may make, it, uh, if they give you explicit permission to do that, you may, you may be able to, like, if, so basically if you show up to Bellevue with a lawyer, you might be <laughs> able to get specific written permission in your case to will your games to one of your next of kids. No, for and you might. No, I, you can't <laughs> yeah. get his number. Shut no. up. Shut up. Um, yeah, so the, uh, there are some other uh, practical uh, ways you could go about this as well. You could give someone a drive with all of your games installed on them. That is probably the most legally grounded way to do it because, you know, it's a, the actual thing where it's installed. Um, you could um, give someone your give them your password and 2FA, although that does technically violate the Steam TOS. And if they, if Valve did find out, then I guess technically they could shut your account down. I don't necessarily know why they would, but they could. They'd be well within your rights. You know, I'm going to play could. the time tilted gog, but like, bam, right there. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. The, the, well, welcome to the other side of not, no, uh, of, uh, not owning anything. Tur- turns out, yeah. uh, got to pay for a license every single time. What happens with and family the, sharing? Yeah. Th- this is also Valve, you know, the company that, basically didn't do anything uh against the gambling on csgo skins while that until that broke into mainstream media and then they had to do something about it and they have really because part of the uh non-transferability of the steam accounts uh is to crack down on account resellers but they haven't so as long as you don't draw attention to yourself you could probably keep playing on grandpa's account for as long as you like (laughs) I, uh, yeah, no, I, unless it becomes a thing, well, it it is kind of becoming a thing because it's made it into the mainstream media, so Valve might actually put something in place now. God damn it. (laughs) I don't know, man. My my initial thought was like, you know, how long can a Steam account remain inactive? Like before something, there has to be some type of mechanism in place for Steam to go, okay, we need to prune an active, and then again, it, it is Valve. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, what do you think that counter would be? I don't, I don't know. Cause like what steam has been around for almost 20 years now. Um, so like, but that's like not that 
long amount of time if you think about it. It, it seems it is a long amount of time, I mean, but I it isn't. I don't think we've ever heard of anybody saying, "Oh, my nineteen-year-old or fifteen-year-old account that I've never logged into got erased." Um, yeah, I, I, I think in most cases people would just forget that they have the original account and will just yeah. like, you know, read quite quit, possibly. And I'm sure a lot of you have friends that you know somebody that you used to play games with, you know, twelve, thirteen years ago, and haven't logged in. I have a friend who just opens up a new account every time he forgets his password. And so Fair. he has like 50 billion accounts. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> handing down the account. So what do you need for that? You're going to need to give somebody your username and password and more than likely two factor authentication. So that mobile app that you have set up and most importantly, the password to the encrypted hard drive where you have all of this information in the first place that you forgot to write down on a piece of paper because they're like, Oh yes, here you have all this stuff. It's on the hard drive. It's Oops. inside the computer. Right. <laughs> and you bring up um, family sharing. All right. Maybe that should be an option. You just click it on and, you know, hope for the best and hope those games don't disappear. But I can only imagine, like, the unholy worm of cans that you're going to open up if you ever let people shift games from different accounts, even if it's for completely free, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, the major AAA publishers like your EAs and your Ubisofts and the rest of them, they would throw the peak. Uh, they would make you have to go through two launchers. <laughs> they would throw such a big fit if Valve were uh, allowing people to transfer ownership of the licenses of their games. No, uh, it, we've seen what Valve does with the uh, overly litigious companies and it running off to Nintendo is like, is this okay? Even oh, with okay. <laughs> um, even with family sharing, you have to imagine that Valve had to throw some weight around. Because mm-hmm. you know, you come to EA or Ubisoft, and you're like, "Hey, we're going to have a thing where people, if they have it, and they're like, nah, and they're like, we well, get the fuck off our store." <laughs> what are you going to do? Open your own store? Look how well that went for you <laughs> right. last time, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, with Ubisoft, it uh, uh, seems to still be working because they're uh, far more content to release it on the Epic Store than on Steam. Well, I mean, we're, we're thinking well, about stop, that. Stop I, buying Ubi games. We, like, we gotta fucking bring it in every single time. Like, Ubisoft makes her money on consoles. So does EA. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, 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 no, that e- is EA, the EA makes all their money off of, like, FIFA and shit, right? This like, is what I'm yeah. saying. Like, yeah. they, they give precisely negative fuck about PC gaming. That is like, here. Maybe. You guys go play around. Anyway, I'm interested. Let us know. Drop a comment. Like, what is your contingency plan for keeping your account around? Maybe passing it on. You know, myself, I, I want to live for at least another, you know, 30 Skyrim special editions. So what, like six more months? <laughs> yeah, possibly. Um, but like, hey, Billy, Billy, bring me my phone. There. You can have the Steam account now. Well, I mean, <laughs> even things like that, like, uh, like my login, like I got my death note email, like a lot of people don't have that shit set up. And I got all my login stuff, like, because, like, my Steam account, one of these Yahoo's can do whatever, like, family sharing with it, because that's, like, I don't know who else if I can give it to, right? Like, it would be nice to be able to say something like that, and, like, it's not even in Steam's interest to do that, though, right? No, I mean, I it mean, is. yeah, they, 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 would, they would prefer that the, um, every, the relatives have to go buy another license, right? Like, right. that gives them another 30%. Um, but, but again, like, with, with, with family sharing and with not, like, it seems like they're willing to play ball at least. So maybe, maybe if there's enough public pressure, Valve yeah, will be that's like, the thing. they Fine. don't want the bad press. They don't want to be the bad press. <clears throat> yeah. <I'm doing. laughs> the, the, they don't want the, to the be the bad press is my special company move. that said, the yeah, grandpa died. O- only fans.com had... <laughs> slash Linux Gamecast. A, a grandpa passed away and uh, his uh, grandkids can have the, the 13 or 14 games that he had in his Steam account. Ben, they don't okay, want to you're, be that You're throwing company. that down. Grandpa's <laughs> probably got about 2,700 titles. <laughs> do, you, do you really? But, oh, but then, then, then the there's thing. the weird you, shit. So, so okay, so you, you know how people like would, after you die, you go through their old albums and shit, you look through their journals? Right. Doing that with people's save files? Like, mm-hmm. what did you get up to? How? Let, yeah, let, but, me, uh, let me judge I, you based I'm, on I'm your Skyrim the builds. number of games, I, I can see from, you know, my IRL friends, when I add them on Steam, mm-hmm. they have a hundred games, two hundred games. On occasion, there's someone with like eight hundred, seven hundred ish. Most people don't have a thousand games. <laughs> but Pedro, who are you going? You know, eventually you'll be a grand uncle and pass away. Possibly, 
<laughs> a grunkle? A grunkle. <laughs> like, what, what do you do with the games? Like, unless Nori's just like, just waiting, homie. <laughs> That's we, the we, thing. We already have family uh, sharing set with Nori, so we, as we long as she doesn't wipe like, her PC. Uh, do you think, uh, like, maybe your little brother <laughs> will show up? Technology? No, I'm just imagining his little brother is, like, taking Nori to court, and he's like, nah, man, I want that family sharing. <laughs> Those are my games. Yeah, no, it, it, it tears the entire family apart. It it's just like, yeah. <laughs> Nori just like hires a hitman to take out Pedro's brother. <laughs> it escalated. Shit got out of hand. That, that, uh, that, that was my like life the would be so much more two. interesting if that were the game. It's like, yeah, that, that was like day two of it. Like, your brother brought up getting a lawyer and she immediately escalates to hitman. <laughs> Lady's got a temper, dude. Um, all right, something a little more whimsical to talk about. Womp, womp. Tesla is uh, getting rid of steam. And the Model X and uh, other cars, they've updated their infotainment system, which just doesn't support steam, which that genuinely kind of sucks. If you have a Tesla and you're like, oh, this is cool, it could play steam. I don't think anybody ever bought um, a Tesla. They're like, man, I want a car. What's the selling? Oh, it plays steam? Now, I've messed around with this. See that controller? That's a fucking lie. I spent <laughs> 30 minutes trying to get a goddamn PlayStation controller to sync with my buddy's um, Model X. Never fucking happened. But that does suck because I, I wanted more steam and more cars. Like, that's a really cool fucking feature when you're stuck at a charging station. And electric cars are going to be our fucking future. Like, being stuck at a st charging station, you want shit like yeah. that, right? It, they, and and when, this, when they, the, this particular bit of news came out, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, they I, I do remember seeing a thing that uh, Tesla now supported Steam because they have an AMD um, APU type of situation for the infotainment center. Right. So it's like, OK, all right, cool. Uh, but apparently now they're getting rid of it. Well, it was a bullshit gimmick thing. A downloading anything from fucking Tesla can take up to eight hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Is there like an Ethernet port you can like? No, plug there's your... not. Also, there's no fucking storage, so you're not getting Witcher and shit on there, man. Yeah, like the, the idea well, of cyberpunk, yeah, well, like, like, no. cyberpunk, cyberpunk is like what a, a hundred gig game? Yeah, no, a hundred and something. Up. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's like a little yeah. downside. I mean, I want Steam on like all the fucking vehicles or like put anything on there. Really, like because you're like unless there's a quantum leap in battery technology, like your next car is probably going to be a fucking electric car anyway. Like you wants like a bigger screen experience than just like whatever you get on your mobile according it, to the article you were able to like actually play a steam games while driving that's a little questionable well i mean it has more than one seat like if you got fucking kids dude and you're like oh you need billy to shut the fuck up okay now, if no if, if if it were a backseat thing sure because like they they have like the backseat like flip down tvs in some cars well if you okay i know you don't drive but adjacent to the driver's seat um there's a passenger yeah. seat Yes, <laughs> I'm aware. I spend most of my time in that seat, actually. See, you're the prime customer right yeah. there. Maybe you get, a, get in a couple of rounds, you know? It's just, it can, I, I, there's probably I, I, a way I, I of uh, I, I like scooching the screen so that the driver can't see it, because I can imagine it would be very distracting. Yeah, the, like, <laughs> you guys I, I, are worried as, about as, as a, this as a pedestrian, shit. As, a, as somebody like, who watches other people in their fucking car fucking around with their mobile phones. Like, uh, yeah, in the yeah. grand scheme of things, like, get wrecked. No, um, no, those fuckers need to get their fucking licenses revoked and not be allowed to drive ever again. I so, think pedestrians just didn't get it. You know, we're, we're evolving more agile, faster yeah, moving yeah, pedestrians. Sure, yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> How about you fucking exercise some responsibility with your multi thousand pound murder machine? Ugh. Yeah, no. See, the, the, there's the, the, the people in the great big metal coffin on wheels. And then there's the asshole on a bike without reflectors, without a light, without How dare clothing. You. Bicyclists just... and pedestrians are perfect. I commit no flaws. <laughs> I, I, I just I, I jumps like in more, the middle of the road. I would like, like some more fucking bike lanes too. But you know that, that but you know what? We need we need the Tesla e-bike for that. That, no. that you can like put your VR helmet on and play Cyberpunk while well, you're I while mean, you're the, the advantage around. of the Tesla e-bike is gonna be the frying pan attachment. The, I, I want I want the George Foreman upgrade. Fine. All right, we'll get it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you do want, if you do want to cook some eggs, though, you might want to take a look at our latest new game that we're going to be talking about, Arctic Eggs, where you are stuck in the Ar Antarctica. And well, why do they call it Arctic Eggs if you're in Antarctica? It should be Antarctic Eggs. Anyways, I I, I digress. Uh, <laughs> your goal is to 
cook illegal eggs for people. And these eggs are very special. They have like fucking indestructible yolks that like you can just flip them and drop bacon on them and they won't break. It's amazing. Also, apparently you can fry bullets in this game. So uh, fry and cigarettes. cigarettes. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I yeah. Walk around, cook eggs in this dystopian Arctic hellscape. I'm I'm, I'm intrigued. I saw this shit, man. I watched uh, Gassy Max again. Uh, he was doing some indie thing and I'm like, what? And I just started just casually in the background. I'm like, okay, this, this is, this is a, yeah, sci-fi cooking, man. Possibly the best sci-fi cooking game we're going to get in 2024. And to be real, this is just old fashioned, odd as hell type game. You're like, what the fuck's going on? It's got dialogue. And yeah, your primary mechanic is uh, frying shit. I honestly, I, 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 for, for a second, I thought this was a sequel to Stephen Sausage Roll. Because this would be perfect <laughs> as a sequel for that, right? To give you an idea, this if this turned out to be Frog Fractions 3, I'd be like, all right. <laughs> Similar to Metro Exodus and Cyberpunk. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, I like the graphics. <laughs> I, uh, there seems to be a, a general motif of, um, like, cursed PS1 era 3D going on. I like it. I played through Dread Delusion, which is <laughs> kind of the same uh, 3D-ish style that they were going for uh i i like it. It, it i don't even care that it's completely unhinged and you're frying bullets and cigarettes <laughs> uh that that as a game mechanic i'm down for that <laughs> listen game, i'm game, just game gonna developers, recommend game developers game developers come up come over here uncle ven i'm gonna talk to you for a minute okay a couple of years ago when i was talking about hipster pixel voxels i was kidding okay <laughs> N- nostalgia always marches on. That's, now that's now we have jiggly polygons as an aesthetic, and Pedro's like, "Fucking yes!" I, oh. yeah, I, I, I prefer I, that to the hipster pixels. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it too. I have, I have, uh, I have a nostalgic recollection of those days. And if Wiggle you can like, have some too. modern gameplay shit, then you know it doesn't have to suck ass anymore. Yeah, and a uh, uh, dread delusion. It actually gives you the option: Do you want the jiggly 3D? Do you want the jiggly textures? If you don't, they're just they're just you know, pixely and static. Otherwise, they do that. I, I, I just want my jiggly yolks. <laughs> jiggly yolks. Uh, Crossplay. No yolks. Uh, yay, I guess. Yay. <laughs> will, will, will it work I, this time? That's, that's what I would like to know. Uh, answer is that's no, Jordan. It? No, because I tried it. I'm like, you know what? We could do a little bit of co-op tonight in the after show. Fuck that noise. Together Every we time. stand Every another time. update for hypercharged unbox. And this starts out with a Hey guys, um, shit ain't going so good. This is our childhood project and all that. And anyway, if you don't know about, uh, this is toy soldiers, but with, how would you describe it? I mean, you know, PVP, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's, uh, the, the Ar- green army men game, small soldiers. It, it, it's uh, yeah. It's the army men game, but in the age of Fortnite. Uh, and it it's is, so much uh, more than just like when we say army men, like the art style to this, I mean, it's well done. I mean, it looks like, you know, a double a game, hundred percent. You might even say triple a and a lot of love and work has went into it. It's got a couple of different modes, you know, with like build little fortresses or just straight up death match. And it's not bad. It's not bad. I've never had a problem with it, but, um, it, apparently it didn't have cross play. So they're going to enable that for all of the Xbox and the modern Xbox and on, uh, May 31st. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, all I can say is the same week ever since they've sent us review copies, uh, it's got a demo, try it out, but y'all got to come off that price. You do. I mean, you can't get away with pricing like a double a PVP online only. I'm sure it's got a story or whatever quotations around that 24 99. That's not a sustainable price for a video game. In 2024, it's not me being cheap. That's just reality. Like somebody on the team needs to like price chart this shit out and like look at it and go, well, that might be a problem. Yeah, $10. Uh, <laughs> and it, it is clearly a labor of love. And if you had any doubts about that, that little snippet at the top of the, uh, the article is uh, very enlightening and they do care. So, and they keep, even though the game isn't doing that great they keep pushing and they keep introducing mm-hmm. new stuff they just need to fix the Linux build please already but Come i mean on. it can app yeah okay here's what's wrong with it same thing uh man what like six or seven months ago last time we tried it in windowed mode it doesn't correctly capture the mouse 
at least on X11. Why is that a big problem? You want people to stream your game? Guess what? Most of us who are doing streaming are streaming the game in window mode. Why? Because we got other shit that needs to go on. You know, we're not afforded the luxury of full screen gaming. It's like one of the trade-offs you got to make. Except for you, commenter, who's like, that's how I do it. And I'm like, okay, fine. You do you. So there's <laughs> a I have, That's because I have a million monitors in front of me. And right. I'm just, yeah. As somebody with like seven fucking still doing it in a window, dude. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure it captures that fucking mouse appropriately and it doesn't slip out, which that's still a problem on Linux. Like we would have played it tonight and like fucked around with it, but I'm like, I genuinely can't unless I want to play with a controller and I don't have an Xbox, so I'm not playing a fucking first person shooter <laughs> with a controller or it's not a joke stream, you know? Like we did, uh, yeah, we did do that quick. <laughs> we finished Quake with the Steam controller. Yes. Right? I, I, I had fun doing that. I thought that was that was entertaining. Hmm. That makes one of us. Um, someone had to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was all right. It was all right. What do we got coming up next? Four twenty plays it, yo. Neverwinter Nights. Yes, because uh, you know, I'm a simple person. I like the games that I like, and Neverwinter Nights is still my all time favorite Linux native game. Even back in the day, before Steam on Linux was a I thing. I genuinely Humble thought they just it. misspelt there. It was that t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. they, they were, uh, yeah, take right. that, grammar Nazis. Yeah. But yeah, it is uh, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. They've been, Beamdog basically let the community take over the reins, and the community is going, all right, then let's uh, put a little bit of a showcase on a couple of the big community mods. Uh, or, like, actual full modules that you can just play through in Neverwinter Nights. Uh, Siege of Shadowdale uh, and the Crimson, Crimson Tides, Tides of, of Tether. Tether. Yeah. It is, like, the two mods are actually full-on campaigns that you can just play through. And you can just get the campaigns from the, like, start a new game mode and click the button. That's it. You don't need to go to the NW Vault or go to the Nexus, you just go there, click it, it'll download it, and then you can play it, which is very nice. That is legitimately a very nice feature, just keep people in the game and playing. That's really, really nice. <laughs> I, I just like the fact that you called yourself a simple man. You're like, I like Neverwinter Nights, one of the most complicated editions of D&D ever. Um, yeah. I, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I I mean it's 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 good that they're uh, that they're adding uh, or they're they're polishing a bunch of these community mods because like that was really the, the, literally the reason that Neverwinter Nights has survived this long is because the the That's Bioware the the guys did a good and they shipped the entire level design and game design tools with the game so that people could just make content ad infinitum and you know we're still fucking here doing it so that's pretty cool good on them now this game <laughs> has been out. Uh, Bet it seems like almost as long as Linux has uh, had a Steam client, right? 2016, so not that long. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, uh, well, the Steam beta is, for is Linux that, came out. Is that why they put 2014 on their Steam page just to fuck with us? Oh, is it 2014? Maybe. Maybe it's one of them. <laughs> Reading's hard, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Steam for Linux started in uh, 2012, so you know, <laughs> still uh, a significant margin there, but. This is one of the very few games that I've actually 100% all of the achievements. I wasn't even trying to do it. It just kind of happened. Blaze Rush is, uh, they have, well, they had two updates in very quick succession. On the first update, they said, there's going to be, you know, a, an update to the game that hasn't seen an update since 2016. That's where I got mixed up. Uh, and they're releasing an update. They're introducing uh, new versions for... Um, the Quest VR and a few other platforms. But of course, Linux, Mac, and Steam VR will uh, soon be getting the boot. And they phrased it as unfortunately, downloading and running Blaze Rush on Linux, Mac, and Steam VR will soon be impossible. The next day. <laughs> Pretty easy to do it with all the vagary in this, Pedro. How dare you? Because, like, yeah, anybody can misinterpret this due to technical support. Uh, yeah, we'll be discontinued mm -hmm. via. Yeah, see, like, it's pretty easy to not be able to figure out what they mean by that. Yeah, well, also, yeah, also yeah. become unavailable implies that the other two platforms are also unavailable. And the very next day, they had to put out a bit of an announcement to say, uh, okay, in the last bit of news, we said that the version for Mac and Linux systems will become completely unavailable. Mm -hmm. This was incomplete and contained an error. 
<laughs> what was the Users? error? Hang on. What was the error? The uh, part that comes after this, this, this is the <laughs> part that might have led to some confusion. Uh, <laughs> downloading yes. and running Blaze Rush on Linux Mac will soon be impossible. Mm -hmm. That seems impossible. completely error free. It seems like you said what you meant to say there, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah, uh, uh, but no, apparently, uh, the if you have the game already, you can keep playing on Mac and Linux, the old version. It just won't get the update. Mm. And um, it wouldn't be the first time, historically speaking, that Valve have um, allowed people to ask for refunds for games that they've gone over the two hours that they've bought more than two weeks ago for developers who pulled this exact kind of bullshit. And they probably looked at the thing and went, mm, okay, our very cheap game from a long, long time ago, probably not making enough money right now that we can justify the refunds that come from us pulling. You want to think that. You want to version? think that. No, I'll tell you what happened. Let, let me tell you what happened, kids. I mean, I think you're playing those two. That little game that nobody was buying now surprisingly had over has over 200 monthly online players. Yeah, there's still active people playing. <laughs> would have lost that bet. Tell you what happened, it's easy. Go to their fucking uh, page. They saw the announcement, like the six of us who even kept track of a 10-year-old game, started leaving negative reviews. And the one thing you want for your game that's barely selling is negative reviews. And they're like, what do we have to do to stop these? Oh, literally do nothing. And just <laughs> explain that, okay, you can still download it. Not still leave a fucking negative review. Fuck you guys. But it's a 10-year-old game. I don't care. Most people don't. And they're like, that game's still around? That's your reaction. Except... Pedro played a lot of it. He thinks about it when he's not dodge rolling. I have it installed on my Steam Deck right now. That's it's it's been one of those games that I keep around because it's fun to play. It's we that live we're not in a post Proton world <laughs> where it doesn't fucking matter if it supports Linux, unfortunately. And I mean, like That's again, the, the, those old Unity Ghetto games, like generally tend to run better on Proton now than they do natively. Oh, yeah, I, 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 what you meant to say was run. Yes. Uh, uh, of course, this isn't the Unity game. This is actually no? their own custom engine. Targum ah. uh, made their own engine. Yes. We threw chairs yeah. at it, too. So. Yeah, I remember. I'm, I'm sure we did. That was, I don't, I don't know, what, 10 ago. years ago? Yeah. Probably. It's been a minute. I, I, I have smoked so many joints in between then and now, Pedro. So many. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Sticking with the green, ladies and gentlemen. NVIDIA 555, this is the chosen one. This is the foretold driver that fixes all of the damn problems because I saw, um, I posted it in our Discord. There's a new screen when you go to install it, like right up front. It's like, hey man, do you want to install the uh, GPL kernel modules or do you want to install uh, the proprietary ones? And I was like, option B, burn, bitch. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Nothing. Work fine. No problems. And by default, the 555 beta drivers are using the GSP firmware. So if you get that kicking around, it's like, hey, I'm going to use that. And by all accounts, even uh, the artist formerly known as Empty in uh, Shadow Realm was like, Fallout 3 works with Wayland now with my NVIDIA card. That has been impossible. Now it works. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Saw a lot of people on Reddit going, it just works. The pitching and stuttering and freezing is working just fine. And, uh, couple other things, but something that's interesting, if you have been um, using OBS, you're familiar with the uh, NVFPC plugin, which, you know, you had to patch your drivers because it was only available for Quadros, easy enough to do. That allowed you to basically get cost-free full screen capture in OBS, utilizing the hardware that's in all of your cards. You just didn't get access to it. That really was gone because um, it moved. It used to be OpenGL. And there was no way, you know, because uh, OBS switched over to EGL. Now, EGL-based NVFPC is possible. To which the guy who made the plugin and hasn't had to touch it in two years went, wait, why, are, why am I getting messages all of a sudden from people going, hey, he's like, I haven't added an NVIDIA card in two years. Okay, so what do you need to do to make it work again? Which would be kind of neat. That'd be dope. Um, yeah, no explosions. Running them right now. I've been running them uh, since... Wednesday, at least. But I do wonder, do you think the GPL modules uh, do any... I didn't check it because I'm on kernel 6.8, which is like old school kernel, but if they still do the check, because I know you've run into it, if you've yeah. installed the run files or people actually... This is why I say learn to install your fucking drivers, kids, from run files. 
because you'll do like an apt update and you'll have two new a kernel and that'll fall apart and you're fucked because you don't know what to do now. You're at a, you know, command prompt. Um, if you had two new of a kernel, the NVIDIA drivers would go, uh-uh, I can't build modules against that. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't know. I should hope that like maybe the, the hooks are a little bit more stable for at least the GPL side of things. Uh, but yeah, having, having no more NVIDIA cards plugged into Linux machines, I, I don't know. They did also get rid of the base mosaic stuff, which I guess no one was really womp using. Womp. It was, it was limited <laughs> to like five monitors and no one really gave a shit. So they're just like, they, they turfed it. They, whatever. Oh, they, they allowed up to five monitors. Wow. Yeah, apparently. It, it, I remember it was four. <laughs> and that a, that was point. like back in the, um, 700 series, even my 2060, yeah. I was like, let me load this bitch up. Oh, where's my VR port? You mean my monitor bonus yeah. port? Yep. All right. <laughs> it, it, it was okay. So it was, uh, previously only available on select GPU boards with some motherboards limited to uh -huh. five display devices. So yeah, no, like you had to have the right card. You had mm -hmm. to have the right motherboard. And then, then you could do it with up to five display. And apparently no then one, no one was taking up on that. Let you have it. <laughs> Now, we talked about this in the pre-pre-super shows, and go back and listen to that. Hours and hours of content, if you're a patron. The wild world of being able to just plug in an NVIDIA card, it's going to work. Because our next story means that you might not even have to install oh, drivers at all. <laughs> oh, it's very much coming, because yes, there's... A there, there seems to be a lot of uh, collaborative stories lately uh, cropping up, but this one's good. Uh, Mesa 24.1 brings new uh, hardware support for the Panfrost ARM yes! SoC GPUs, which finally uh, the, uh, the people with the rock chips and a few others that have uh, Panfrost GPUs Ooh. in them finally get some proper uh, <laughs> proper support and Zinc oh. Uh, there's been an update to Zinc, as in the implementation of Zinc over NVK is now fully OpenGL 4.6 compliant, which is insane considering how not that long ago NVK became a thing. And of well, course, it's, it's, NVK. It's, it's also the uh, it's also the second uh, driver that is fully um, OpenGL compliant yep. through Zinc as well, because there's the imagination GPUs as well. Yes, and the NVK. Uh, uh, driver proper, just the NVIDIA Vulkan driver, the open source one, is now a part of Mesa. You don't need to pass any uh, launch codes while you're building it yourself. It will be available. It's not considered experimental anymore, but that doesn't mean that it's man, one to fuck one. That, the dude, I remember before, the, uh, before this driver sold out, when it was underground, man. <laughs> mainstream, well, yeah, mainstream. Yeah, mainstream. Yeah, you don't, you don't get any cool creds anymore for running it. There now, and you probably can't as long this is nvk so you need to have an rtx 2000 or gtx 1600 series card or you need to have an nvidia card work. made in the last decade the uh, last five years yes <laughs> but with the 20 series with five years ago all of a sudden okay your time dilation's a bit off i think a little bit probably <laughs> uh <laughs> what was the 2000 series <laughs> oh, oh hang on no, 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 hang on nobody cheat 20, nobody cheat Ooh. <laughs> I want to say 2018? 2018 is correct. Yes. <laughs> hey. So yeah, six years ago. I was one off. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm just happy I, I managed to like accurately assess a gap of time because I'm terrible at that. Um, but yeah. Um, the the people on Reddit uh, have been trying out the the Zinc stuff. The performance isn't there yet, but like, I mean, come on, the driver's like two years old. Uh, this is again, I, I, again, they're just That's starting insane. to work on it. <laughs> like the the, the the fact the, again, the fact that it is like lapping uh, old Nouveau like mm -hmm. by a country mile i mean is, yeah, is is already pretty impressive. That, that's like having a disease dog with one leg and. <laughs> Hey, they, listen, they, they didn't have no fancy GSP firmware back in the day. They had no, the they electron man. microscope. Um, yeah, that, that seems to be error. like the big complaint. Uh, how much gaming are you seriously doing on, like, a pre-2000 series NVIDIA card? Like the, the 1080 Ti, as Jordan will attest, uh, was a very popular GPU. NVIDIA made a mistake by making it as good as it was. It was uh, it was designed to compete with the card that AMD never released. And yep. So it just beat the shit out of and everything for years. Like, even the 1070 and the 1070 Ti and the, the regular 1080 non-Ti, those were genuinely really good cards. And the biggest, at least on Linux, 
the biggest shortcoming that they have is the lack of a unified GSP firmware. So and DX12 support. Yeah, the the DX12 support that the newer cards enjoy because the firmware is laid out as it is cannot be cannot heavy air quotes around cannot be backported to Pascal and previous cards. You is heard it, is you, it like the Evangelion? No, no, like no, you no, can you collaborate. You heard it. Not. Pedro just threw down. Pedro believes you're in the pocket of Big Green. <laughs> Uh, that's the thing. I very much hope that with Collabra's work, and seriously, nothing but mad respect to everyone Listen, involved. Listen, I believe Collabra's just <laughs> looked at it and like, we got better shit to do than support your retro GPUs, homie. Yeah, I, but I, this I, thing, the 1060 was until it, it's not an too old long card, ago. Dude, it, 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 10, 20, 30, it's three fucking generations old, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, a retro gaming card. Yeah, I'm not saying it was a not bad. It, it was a great fucking card, but Three generations old GPU, like cut them some and slack. And it's still Vulcan uh, one point three compliant. If you're yeah, using I, the proprietary I mean, drivers, honestly, the kid the kid has my old 1080 Ti, yeah. and it plays most of his fucking shit. Exactly. Like, like that, that. That's basically what it was. And it's going to continue on, playing all your shit. Yeah. And like in worst case scenario, you keep a period correct uh, NVIDIA driver and operating system for your vintage gaming machine. In, the indeed. problem is the Vic eighty three D performance. That that oh, that, yeah. that was my complaint. Oh no! The, uh, that, 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 was, that was that was that was my complaint. I tried to fucking play Cyberpunk on that shit. That was not happening. Um, yeah, I, I, when, I, when I do, I do, I do want to cycle back to five seventy does better in DirectX twelve on Linux than a GTX ten eighty. That's that's bad. <laughs> no bueno. I I do want to cycle back a bit to the Panfrost stuff though, because I'm really excited. Just because now. Not like we're we basically just have like boot left. We just need to get fucking rock chip booting on a stock yeah. kernel. And then, then all of these beautiful little devices that are that are sitting collecting the high powered running. ARM devices, yeah, that were like crazy <laughs> awesome right up until like you could get a quad core eight thread Ryzen twenty four hundred G for hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah, I mean it's still pretty good though. Oh no, uh, no, a, a, no, a core AH sixty four two point dual two point one gig or two point five gig next. Have you ever used it for anything? I have. Yeah, I was oh, using what? it for I was using it for raid rebuilds for oh, a nice. while. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm not shitting on ARM. ARM's powering our Jitsi server back here in the rack. So, uh, no, it's really I, cool I to see. I just want some real horsepower for this guy. That's not like... <sighs> this is like the debate. I mean, like one of the arguments I'm going to be making, interfacinglinux.com, I'm going to be making in a write-up in a, like, the market for, like, high-powered, beefy, chonky ARM is going to be hurting in the short term with now that you can get high-powered ARM, not ARM, but x86, uh, one liter PCs for the same price. Like that throws a fucking wrench into anybody looking to build something in that area. Like Jetsy server, like, do you really want to spend a, like what, two weeks fucking around with that? Or you just want to install it, get done with it. We'll find out awesome work. And I hope they get that full stack for the rock chips because the rock chips saved us all. When raspberry Pi told us all to go, you know, fuck ourselves. <laughs> You're like, you're not an enterprise customer. You don't get chips. And like Raspberry Pis were like 200 bucks if you could find one. Oh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good work, everybody at Calabra making this happen. And we're going to genuinely be at a place where you can just plug your NVIDIA card in. How's it going to work? You don't have to worry about it. I'm genuinely curious how it's going to work with Optimus laptops. I do have one of them. So I'm kind of, you know, uh, I want to try it, but at the same time, How's that? I wonder. I, 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 I wonder if like the 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 prime stuff is all just handled like in firmware. Like you just set the environment variable in the thing. that that would probably be the best way to do it. Or if they do like they already do with the proprietary drivers, where you just if you have to, you point to a specific ICD file and it says no, you use this driver for this. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, they they never like threw down hard on. They didn't say we've never support older cards, did they? No, the, the, no they, 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 they said their priority was getting like current gen working, and yeah. then they were going to look at backporting it once once they have a stable thing. So Pascal maybe, maybe, was one that they specifically mentioned as maybe they could get it working if they could. All right. I, I I hope I hope they do. I really do. Yes, I think it'll be dope as fuck, man. Uh, what do we get up next? Oh man, okay. All right, blocks. Hey man, blocks, dude. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to. Well, you know what? Actually, you might. You might be able to run this on your Jetson Nano. I might. Yeah. 
because uh, as long as you have an NVIDIA GPU, yeah, it's Netris. Uh, it is game streaming uh, for uh, for yourself if you have an NVIDIA uh, GPU. Um, it's basically basically a self-hosted GeForce Now. Uh, works in your browser. Uh, uses Proton GE to actually run the game, then streams it to a browser. Um, latest release pulls out some stocks by including uh, X Wayland support with the NVIDIA 555 releases. Uh, they have Mango HUD and Games Go by default on the server as well, so you can get those stats while you are playing the game through your browser. And yeah, it's NVIDIA GPUs only. They had a release that came out last week, which is not one zero, that you can uh, that you can uh, run yourself if you have the appropriate computer. Not Otherwise, they do zero, have. Uh, I really feel like we could do a who's on first joke with this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know I don't know it's on third, but yeah uh, they also have a uh, they have a hosted version if you want to give them money you can get, do that and play games on their computer. Oh, yeah, you do need CUDA version Cuda. twelve nut. Yeah, yeah, it, it <laughs> that, uses that, the, uh, the it uses one. the <laughs> Nvidia Docker uh, Docker framework, so you need to have that installed. Boo! <laughs> that that to be fair, as uh, Surface deployment goes, if you're just deploying this to a server that's running maybe. A quadro that doesn't even have video out, probably a good idea. Uh, but <laughs> the yeah, no, it's version zero one zero. That that's how early we're talking here. That's how far into the bleeding edge you're putting yourself in. So hey, they they, they have they have a minor version number that it's not just zero zero one zero zero one one zero zero one one like zero 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 one. They've how, tossed some how, things how in, man. That? It's got Pulse Audio Capture support, GPU screen the uh, X Wayland support. Um, yeah. The only the only poo poo thing I'm like ah oh, Docker image. I'm like bah. I mean, I mean, if 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 you if you want to give someone a thing to roll out the server, it's probably the best way to go about it. Uh, then you got people like me. He's like, oh, step one, install Docker. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah. Have have, have irrational fears of C groups. Right. <laughs> no, I just don't want to install Docker. I don't fear it. Okay. Yeah. I hope that upsets somebody. <laughs> Irrational. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, it's if if you if you do have a spare computer and you want to do some game streaming, uh, the the one the one big thing I can think of for this is, I think the the chief problem of remote play is that from Steam is that you have one person with really really good latency and everyone else with shit latency. This levels the playing field. If you want to have a couch multiplayer game and you want to play it over the internet, you run it on here. Everyone connects over the over the browser, and then everyone has the same input delay, assuming they're not mm. in the UK. So ultimately, yeah. the moral of that story is going to be, man, uh, I mean, it's pretty cool. I like it. it like you said, it's using Proton GE, and you know it's a good project when it looks like three YouTube uh, fucking logos gangbanging, like right at the front page. That's usually a good sign. And hey, man, it's using the VMAF from NVIDIA, which is like their stream optimization for the bandwidth data bits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty dope. Also, give give me a let me deploy it in Podman, please. That would that, that would be nice. Yeah, I don't I don't that think the uh, NVIDIA easier, container yeah. runtime <laughs> runs in Podman though, which is the only. Which I don't is the need only... it to run. I'm just not installing Docker. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly I recommend using Pod- Podman. Podcast. Yes. Yes. The Matrix. Podcast. Uh, the Matrix. My Mr. Old Mr. Anderson. Yeah, uh, a few years ago, uh, the Matrix awoke to a um, epic. Uh, Unreal Five uh, tech demo that they did, and well, in the interest of preservation, because that's been in the news recently, uh, someone basically went in and removed all of the bits that were actually under copyright, like the characters and uh, everything else. But as it turns out, the city did not fall under copyright, so they've released the uh, the demo where you can load up the uh, Unreal 5 city that they used for the uh, experience, as they called it. Uh, and yeah, you could just play it. Maybe. I, on the other hand, uh, could not. <laughs> Basically, it, it got to the point where if I tried to launch the native Linux version, I didn't try any either of the uh, the Windows versions. I probably will. But yeah, with the native Linux version, uh, X Wayland doesn't like it. To the point that it crashes and it brings the uh, KDE Plasma session down along with it. So, so I get to see the loading screen. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you got to be honest, though. I mean, sometimes things fuck up hard enough to where you're a little impressed, right? It, that is that is genuinely impressive. 
Good job. I mean, it is kind of <laughs> wild. I downloaded it uh, earlier this week. 16 gigajoules to download this bad boy. And all it does on my 3060 thread ripping system, running X11, not uh, any of that new fancy Wayland stuff, is it fucks off for 60 seconds and gives me an error screen. I guess I, I guess I'm just like the pro here. I I, I downloaded and now a word it. from the one motherfucker who managed to yeah, yes, yeah the yeah. one with the current gen uh, graphics card. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah yeah yeah. Um and and crippling <laughs> attention deficit disorder because it took me three attempts to actually <laughs> launch this fucking thing because it's 17 fucking gigs, so it takes a while to download and extract. But yes, I did I did get into it. I thought it was going to be like um, like a just like a regular benchmark, but it is an interactive demo. Um, and while the still, the still screens look incredibly photorealistic, oh God, that thing runs like ass on my 7800 XT. Dear Lord. Um, is this UE5? I believe yes. this is UE5. Ah. Um, and there's no, I, I didn't play around with it too much cause I like did it five minutes before we went into the pre pre super shows and, right. but I couldn't find any way to like adjust resolution or performance. It's just kind of like, whatever your full screen is, oh. let's, let's fucking go. Let's do it. <laughs> that's always the worst man um it's cool that it works i know a lot of chatter in our discord was um just run it through wine it runs better with proton yes <laughs> which unfortunately is a general yeah. i mean <laughs> if we've, you, we've you, over you, the years under- uh we've definitely run into um smash that export button and i know i've said it like you can make unreal engine 4 at least that's what i was addressing back in the day perform it under Linux, but it's not that out of the box. Uh, but we've seen good examples on UE4 games running natively on Linux without any like serious performance hits. Those are the exception, though. And then you get things yeah. like this. If you do a direct port, you end up with more often than not what we yeah, got the, Jordan in the slideshow. <laughs> UE graphics on Linux has always been a bit of a, a bit of a pain point. I think, um, like, I, I don't think there's ever been like a straight one-to-one like i think i think unity was uh, the closest anyone ever got to like the actual just click export and it like will run acceptably well um yeah unreal engine four and now now i guess five never, never five, really maybe. got there yeah. mm. all right let's talk about uh we're all getting dumber and we need more um yes that's 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 exactly <laughs> what this quantic foundry survey said um yeah so they're saying uh that strategy is declining uh, in popularity as a uh as a uh genre of appeal not necessarily a genre of game but like types of s- characteristics of games that they would associate with strategy games are becoming less and less appealing they have this survey all three of us took it i guess we're going to go over the results after we all talk about our shtick um but saying that um basically people are not super engaging with strategic elements of games. Now, what they define it as is strategy is defined as the appeal of long-term thinking, planning, and careful decision-making. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with this. I think strategic, there are, these days there are like more strategic elements baked into games, but they are peppered with more immediate uh, uh, mechanics like uh, action RPGs, for example. You pick how you, your strategy is how the weapon you pick, the special moves that you use, the armor that you use, a particular play style, a particular build, whatever. That is, that is, that is still a strategy. Baldur's Gate 3, huge hit. Arguably a strategy, at least in part a strategy game, because you're making tactical decisions on a battlefield, and you're also managing relationships on multiple levels, which requires some deal of strategic Um, But like, and like go, going further, like auto chess was huge for a while. That's a strategy game. You pick a game plan based on your pieces. But I think like overall, I would agree with the, the sentiment that like, pure strategy games would become less popular in general just because life becomes more stressful and the brain power that you're devoting to coming up with your winning strat probably is better dedicated to making sure that you make your rent and can make and can afford food so i i, I don't know um i i, I think strategy strategy is changing in the same way that like rpgs are changing where you had final fantasy once as like a turn-based thing now it's basically devil may cry and we're i think we're going to start seeing like more genre mashup and homogenization and i think that is what this this survey is reflecting that's a that's a pretty bold take um uh (laughs) here's the thing uh continuing on from what jordan was saying is like yes you have other things to worry about so you don't devote as much brain power to strategy 
and then you have kids and you don't pass on the strategy games to the kids because you can't be asked so you only show them the ones that you're actively enjoying playing so those kids don't get exposed to it so they never play it so it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy after that point um it i get it i absolutely get it because and you see if you know anyone with kids the the attention span of a goldfish <laughs> uh is very much a thing and i i took the survey uh i i i i too have problems with how they define yeah that's my uh that's my graph there uh 48 action 68 percent creativity only 11 percent immersion uh 25 percent mastery yes uh they, they they are very they have some interesting definitions for the categories because the immersion components they shoehorn the plot and npc stories and everything else that's already baked into the game rather than the narrative that you yourself build as a player while you're playing the game that I yeah, that, I have. Yeah, I think this with nails it, dude. I mean, I'm looking at the <laughs> secondary motivations. Uh, you want a an exciting fantasy game that's a collectathon. That's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, no. Th- uh, there's a reason those are the secondary motivations because uh, the primary motivations I thought were actually pretty accurate with how they define each of the things. It's like, yes, if that's how you're going to define immersion. Sure. I mean, that basically defines 11%. the entirety of the Fallout series. <laughs> I have played the entirety of the That's Fallout series. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it's not that far off, man. <laughs> uh, I've played the entirety of the Souls series. Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Elden Ring. Uh, not Bloodborne yet. Uh, <laughs> but That's a personal is, choice. No, no, people need to go ahead yes. and put their fucking bets on to what Pedro is going to come up with next once it's on PC. There will be a reason. <laughs> It's an, epic, it's an Epic Store exclusive. That's Something. Something. I mean, if it is an Epic Store exclusive, then they go fuck themselves. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Jordan's uh, happy central blob of like, yeah, yeah whatever. I, 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 did, I did not, I didn't like really go to the extreme answers on any of the survey questions because like I'm not that Neither kind of like, I. yeah. So <laughs> I, I I, I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty balanced in terms of like stuff I like. Not so much I guess on the mastery side. Yeah, that yeah. would be like the uh, yeah, you know what can't be asked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I I feel that. And let's take a look at the uh, secondary. What's Jordan's uh, a fantasy? Just fantasy, and he's good. He'll fuck off and play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantasy I, destruction I, I, community strategy fan, uh, fantasy strategy. would like maybe maybe a side order of fucking discovery and if i happen to step on completion challenger <laughs> <laughs> excitement yeah. yeah shit happens yeah i'm, yeah. I'm, I'm but I like I'm, I'm i'm very picky about what i like but i'm like yeah i don't know i'm, I'm other otherwise pretty easy to please what, what about you then uh let me see uh i i'm action yeah give me an action game where we can like chat and uh it takes a little bit of skill to get good at yeah i pretty much aimed at that what am i on secondary so yeah give me a game where i can fuck around look for shit it's really exciting uh has a competition and is a little bit challenging yeah and it's not a collective font thon and i can live i can fantasy i can give or take yeah, I, I I guess from that regard, I'm not a fan of like super simulationist games. I'm 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 generally good about narrative and yeah, just like be, give be, me a good story, in, like being yeah, in the g- world. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not looking for like escapism when I play a video game. It's a fucking video game for me. All right, and like if that's your game, like I need something to separate me. Like you do you. For me, a video game is a video game. You know, and like I I want to sit down and fuck around. I, I like something like Horizon Zero Dawn. Like give me a game. Give me give me a story. Put a fucking skip button at it. Let me go explore. Put some shit in there if I want to go collecting. Like I very open worldy, but I give me a finish goal at the end, right? Mm. Give me some I combat too. See. It needs the combat. It can't <laughs> just be like you know Minecraft or some shit. I can see myself with the uh, the collectathons because I will go out of my way to find everything of any one thing if there is a direct correlation between the things that I'm finding and my oh, if, perception 
of if, power. If there, if there is, if there is, yeah, if there is a big enough carrot at the end of that stick, mm -hmm. then yeah, I'll I'll do the collectathon. If it's like, oh yeah, and you get the plus five thousand weapon that just like fucking curb stomp shit. It's like, it's okay, like, I guess oh, I'm you, collecting you acorns. get the gun that one shots everything. It's like, yeah, no, I'll probably go out of my way to get that gun, please, thank you. I got to know about that fucking reward. And yes, I will go on that forever. I did that with the um, near new old near mm -hmm. to get a second ending. Then I got to the like third one. I was like, no, you need to buy a weapon from every fucking. I'm like, yes, you need to have all of the weapons. Fuck that. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Like, it depends on what type of game you like. That's an interesting like read. Uh, one thing I was a little worried about, man, because they, they brought up like the duration and movie shots. Like, you know, when you make scene to scene to scene like jumping yeah, yeah. around that they, they had numbers for that it used to be uh like in the 1930s it was like 16 seconds to hold a frame mm -hmm. and maybe you get like a profile shot or like you know a camera angle change it's four seconds up to 2010 mm -hmm. now which i know it's drastically lower than that because when i'm doing a video my internal beat just for me like when i'm editing in davinci resolve is like fucking five seconds unless it's a static overhead shot like i'm just do working through something Anything outside of that, like I want something moving. I, there needs to be motion on that fucking screen, like every three to five seconds. I feel like that is the cadence that is required because mm -hmm. squirrel, which is kind of strange, man. Um, do you think strategy games as a whole, like how many like tra strategy games have like come out that are popular? Chicken, chicken and chainsaw. That's Again, it's I always been a, a little bit of a niche by itself I, again, p p again we're, t we're talking about like pure strategy games so we're talking like a starcraft command and conquer that chess. kind of thing chess <laughs> yeah, no. Is it chess yeah no then you have like real-time strategy versus turn-based strategy it, strategy it's always over been a, a niche mail. with so many sub niches that it <sighs> where do you and, and how do you and, and there's, there, there, <laughs> there are things you need to deep dive into too because part part of like strategic gameplay is actually understanding the system and the mechanisms mm -hmm. To the yes. point where you can make, you know, uh, complex and fine green decisions about these. That's why XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and XCOM 2 were great, because they were really simple to understand. <laughs> and I will sit here and fucking defend that Dark Souls is borderline turn-based strategy. A slow fuck that one game, isn't it? Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first one, abs maybe. Uh, but, like, the latter games, like Dark Souls 3, Elden Ring... No. <laughs> Slightly it's less way slow. too fast paced for that. Oh yeah, it's like lightning, man. Like jumping around. It, Elden yeah. Ring, yeah. <laughs> there, there's a, there's a lot of jumping in Elden Ring. Like motherfuckers yeah, are jumping like the entire jump button in Elden Ring. No, 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 no. <laughs> like the the entire like land of Liernia is one giant trampoline. After watching a Let's Play, I have made that determination. From the outside it's perspective, just, watching mm -hmm. people do like a fucking twenty minute long video over like how Dark Souls Three ruined the goddamn franchise is fucking hilarious. You nerds, keep it up. All right. Awesome. Uh, my favorite those, Dark Souls those, is still Dark Souls 2. That's slow paced. <laughs> Dark Souls 3 was too fast, bro. It just wasn't Dark Souls. Yeah, the Dark Souls 3 was uh, trying to bring the uh, appeal that Bloodborne is. Trying to make the game fucking playable for like a modern audience. <laughs> like people who didn't like turn based strategy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you know that, that, that Baldur's Gate sold like shit. Absolutely. Hey, yeah, man, yeah. You, we're not talking about action RPGs, all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, you mean Doom? <laughs> yes. As we've established, Doom was an action RPG. No, that, that, that's the city sim. <laughs> no, that, that, that's Wolfenstein. Oh, right. All right, fair enough. Up next, uh, pour one out. I wanted to give this a quick mention before we get out of here. IGN, a uh, much beloved uh, network company that's been around. Has Their decided, website? Yeah, they exist. Uh, don't pretend you don't know about them, because they'll be like, oh, I've never heard of IGN. Like, get the fuck out of here. They've bought the Gamers Network sites. Uh, layoffs are in progress. So what Gamers Network sites, what's that? That sounds fucking familiar. It should. We're talking, they are the umbrella corporation of Eurogamer, GameIndustry.biz, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, VG247, and um, Dicebreaker. They were, that was the wholly owned entities. They also got, uh, like, they have, like, interest, which they didn't buy because they couldn't sell it because they didn't. They, they only had, like, small stakes and um, shit like Nintendo Life um, and uh, other things like Outside Digital Xbox, Foundry. Digital Foundry. Yeah. Hookshot. <laughs> and 
That's wild, man. Yeah, I'm with Pedro, dude. I was like, rock, paper, shotgun. No, I remember when you were the edgy little. I yeah. love rock, paper, shotgun. Yeah, that was like, you know, the, I, I, I the would, one I, mainstream site that wasn't Kaku or Polygon or PC Gamer. Uh, that was fun. They were, they were genuinely Now I feel old. Read. Are you calling like rock, paper, shotgun like mainstream? I was like, I remember when dude started it. I mean, I mean was it, it, it was back, back when there was still a PC gamer. Oh, magazine, I know. Right? I mean, it, it is now, but it's like, I, I, yeah, I'm like, all right, I'll get off my. I'm, I'm, I'm a little sad. <laughs> I, I would occasionally check Dice Make Breaker for like tabletop news, but like, yeah, you know, rip in peace to all the folks who are about to or are currently being laid off. Sorry, yeah. dudes. Like the, the uh, dude who was effectively GameIndustry.biz, which I follow on Mastodon. Good on them for having a Mastodon account because uh, I like read over, like they're on top of shit, but like industry news mm -hmm. which is more interesting me to me than like whatever you know baby the, the drama mama right. drama shit going on and there's not many people out there doing it man you bring it by uh, what, what i think about like what is because like you know you got to think about like traditional games journalism like print website shit that that industry has gone no it's dead no. it ain't coming back as much as we'd want it you do have uh people trying new shit you know you got Jeff Gertzman, he's doing his own thing now. He's got his own Twitch stream that he does a couple of times a week. Then you got like the kids over at uh, Kind of Funny Games. They're trying even, to keep even stuff like uh, 404 Media, right? Like mm -hmm. they're trying. Like you yeah. got to mix things up. I mean, like it's not written anymore. You, they're doing live streams. Like, like that's yeah. where the support, get the support, the support indie podcasts and sites. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. <laughs> Show. Uh, <laughs> where do you go? Like, like for gaming news, like I will genuinely just like pull up a usually like Jeff if he's doing I will check Twitch. Like I was like, I need background noise, like and I'll put it on like or like you might listen to something from Second Wind. Mm -hmm. Second Wind, they do like the bite-sized reviews. I will always listen to those. Mm -hmm. Um fully ramblematic Yahtzee because I'm massive Yahtzee fanboy. <laughs> I am uh uh yeah no it was rock paper shotgun and pc games n i guess as long as there well, were the, the links to all of that stuff in our show notes no. occasionally <laughs> I, I i i guess i guess not so much from the sites we mentioned before how but, long uh, have you been uh reading rock paper shotgun you know the right answer uh, uh basically ever since uh steam started featuring their articles how many people the know entries. the dates that i'm talking about that is part of the slogan <laughs> The one that they called um, oh god, Molyneux a uh, we're looking for liar? a number here, but we're hearing about Molyneux. Let me know when you're done with that. The number. <laughs> no, that's the big thing that I remember about Rock Paper Shotgun <sighs> is one of their uh, 2007. That's the only it's number. Part there. of the fucking logo, people. It's been like that for 20 <laughs> years. 1873. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not that big a diehard Rock Paper Shotgun. Oh, guy. me either. <laughs> it's just I always thought that was fucking like I was like I like that that's funny. No the the uh one of their uh, interviewers uh went up to do an interview with Peter Molyneux and the first question he asked was uh are you a pathological liar? <laughs> and he looked at me he's like I'm just... in the games industry. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Love it. <laughs> Yes, and let I, me tell I, you I, negative things about the next project that I need money for. Yeah, yeah <laughs> let, 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 me, let me just walk up and ask you a super hostile question. That's going to make this conversation go swimmingly. Yes, but that's uh, how you become the hero of Edge Lords everywhere. Yes, yeah. yeah. or at least the, at least the hero of Patreon. Me. Absolutely love that shit. <laughs> it sucked for, uh, I think it was Laura Kate Dale that went after to uh, an interview for a different See, website. that's not what you want for like interviewing somebody. You don't want like the phrase went after. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. And she's the one who uh, basically had to deal with a very, very on edge Peter Molyneux. <laughs> and she was trying just like, okay, I, I'm not going to ask you that question. I heard that and I'm not going to ask you that question. So. Like, yeah, <laughs> so Dean Ossel, uh put you on edge and like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just here trying to get some shit, like maybe tricky into saying some shit. But yeah, yeah. just be like, fo follow it up with my, it's my turn. It's like, are you an app pathological truth teller? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exact opposite question dun, dun, dun. if you got questions for us you can head over to linuxgamecast.com and uh, hit the contact button fill that out and uh, we get an email and we're like hmm 
I'm looking over. It's pretty dope. You got something you need to say, or maybe you got a question that needs the answering. We might talk about it on this very show. Of course, drop both of those in the comment section under the video, video description, wherever you may be. We might check that. And th those end up in a, you know, Patreon post priority. Why? Because you're our bosses. Right. You're making it happen. <laughs> And we got one that I wanted to throw in. I didn't get a chance. This is about two weeks old. Be patient, because sometimes I wait for something to be a little more topical. Or we got some other things that we're working through. Uh, we had a very long discussion to the point where, like, Jordan and I were like, we're going to get disappeared. We, we've stumbled across something. <laughs> that we, should, we should pay attention to this. And it was so many random games on Steam that were just like asset fucking flips, but had enough work put into them. That were like $200 games. Yes. Right? That, yeah, and we, 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 were, we were theorizing, why? Why come so expensive? What is, what is, what is the scam here? Uh, and, and Cody writes in with the bundles. And they say, overprices asset flip games on Steam exist so websites can sell mystery bundles that include games worth $200 for $5. Nothing but shit overpriced garbage. Yes, I think that we, did, we've, I, we, we we've we didn't talk about that. that. Yeah, <laughs> that we, was we, we, we did. We did get a, a, a couple. After. Yeah, yeah. We, we got a couple weeks of feedback for that uh, from that segment because we were talking about that. For few weeks yeah, pretty much around that time, people said it's like, yeah, no, for to like spice up bundles. And I offered the one that I seen, which is account reselling. It's like, yeah, this account has however many hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of games in it. That's how they inflate the price. Yeah, my theory was just money money laundering. It's like, oh yeah, it's three thousand dollar game. Money, uh, money laundering is like way too obvious. Into it. Yes. <laughs> I was reading this is like, I don't buy bundles of games. Where do you buy bundles of games? Like uh, Green Man Gaming or some shit like that? Humble? Not humble. We're talking about the uh, gray market oh, compilations yeah, yeah. of keys that they yeah, bundle so, uh, up. Like, uh, yeah, so it's like yeah, like GMG, GMG type shit. Indie Royale, Fanatical. Uh, Fanatical, yeah. Because, I mean, we've all seen the fucking ads of, like, three, and, you know, with Humble, when they say, hey, it's a, you know, it's cop math, even at Humble, though, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, ah, $700 worth of games for, name your price. As long as that price starts with 20 bucks, because that's as low as you can go, fucko. Yeah. Um, but we've definitely seen, like, you know, thousands of dollars worth of games for, like, 10 bucks or some shit like that. I've never fucking bought that, but I guess people buy into that. But I would never, this would require... It to be a mystery bundle, like some yes. gambling element to it. That's why GTA popped into my mind because I'm sure if we go, let's go to GTA. How do you? What's is it? Just G2A? G2A. I think it's just G2A. dot com. Yeah, uh, G two A. dot com. Here we come, maybe, baby. Maybe you should try binging it. Oh right. <laughs> Apparently, I can log in. Uh, when the Google account. notifications. Uh, best sellers, random keys. What would? Strider, Strider posted a, a mystery mayhem bundle from Fanatical. All right, hang on. We're we're, we're at G two A right now. Uh, <laughs> Hellblade. Isn't that more than that's more than it's on Steam? What the fuck? All right, Xbox that Live is, Key. That's Xbox. Oh, all right. Yeah, that that's Xbox pricing. <laughs> random keys, but it tells you what uh, game. Wait, hang on. Three random. Random oh, VIP keys. There you Five go. Five random yeah. keys for a buck. Oh, oh, and it's got forty three dollar value down here. Look, mm -hmm. okay, so th then, then, yeah, that's that's probably it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's the example that Cody gave. It's yep. the the yes, it, was it the is. VIP. We're just trying to show it off in real time. Yeah, no, uh, it was the leftmost one. It was the VIP one. Was the two hundred dollar okay. for five bucks? The left where? Yeah, best sellers. Five random keys. VIP. Uh, here, here, here. The leftmost one. This one. The five dollar yeah. seventeen cents one. Five dollar seventeen cents. The one that's one hundred eighty four dollars. Dollars of okay. total value. I was looking for two hundred. <laughs> Sorry. Um. There it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Who would? No. The people who buy games from G two A. That's who. <laughs> do people like I, I, buy games from fucking? So G2A? like. Oh God! You, get it all. Uh, that, 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 that guy is going to eat my face. That's some Tony Robbins level. Get five teeth. games for four ninety nine. Uh, Legend. Oh, mysteries. Mm -hmm. So, is it, I, 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 I it, in in my most charitable version of the situation. Oh, all right. Someone someone is sitting and they're like, I want to play a game, but I don't know what. I want to be provided with five options. 
that are pre-selected Why? for me at random, <laughs> and I will choose which one to play. I think these are just people that have got like hardcore gambling addictions. They don't. Oh, they no, don't no, even listen, like. Listen. Like like I said, most charitable version of the situation right. I can think of. They like they're they're just so burnt that they can't even just buy a game anymore. They don't get a hit from it. I'm like, mm. all right, maybe the next bundle. No, but yeah, the, the, well, they they buy a bag of Skittles and they're like, okay, it's got to be four red skittles in this one i'm gonna lose my goddamn mind like, you have to ima- imagine like if you ever wanted to like perpetrate that every 900 or 500 orders you got to put a fucking copy of cyberpunk in that bitch <laughs> right just so that the one guy so that one, one guy- person because you know if you spent five bucks on a bundle and you got a legit copy of fuck you're gonna go to reddit and tell every fucking buddy mm-hmm. be like yeah, yeah. Oh, who's he's, laughing oh, you know, now after oh, you've oh, spent oh, like $600 oh. buying these? E- evil mode, <laughs> include one of those star citizen ships that cost like $10,000. <sighs> <laughs> ah, yes. The NFT game before they were called NFTs. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> don't hate that. <laughs> we, we can go deeper. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's going to wrap us up. But uh, hey, if you like what we do, I want to thank Frizera. Free fee, fee zero. Frizera. Three months resub, and uh, if you want to do that, drop us a sub on Twitch. Spin those Bezos bucks. We'd appreciate it. Link it up to our Discord. Come wrap with us the other six days of the week. If you want, head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Smash that support button. We got Patreon. We got Libra Pay. We even got cryptocurrency, baby. But if that's not your thing, head over to Amazon. Pick us up something from our wish list. Why? Not only will we get the warm and fuzzies, you get to send in a note that we got to read on this very show. I even put your name back here on the fucking wall occasionally we get a merch store amazon storefront and of course humble bundle affiliates we get a little for those cut. legit bundles we get some pennies they, they yeah. peel off a couple of cents for now no 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 <laughs> no, no, no gambling IGN for too? you <laughs> lgc doesn't enable gambling unless no. you're outside the casino and yeah. they'll just throw chips at you that's right <laughs> that's how we do it ah hashtag lgc cares um do you ever, did you ever do any, like, I've been to Vegas a couple of times, uh, like mostly for work, but like, I've been to Vegas just to, like fuck around on this trip. And like, I probably the, my, my full spend of my entire life in Vegas. Uh, so let's say one, two, I've been four times, maybe a hundred bucks total. I did not do any gambling while I was at Vegas. I wanted to, I was really like hoping to see like one of the shows, but like they didn't have anything good when I was, I saw uh, Penn and Dollar. I, that, that, that's, that's the one you want to go see, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, and they're like. Thursday, Friday only. Okay, now like I take Fr- that back. I wanted to see Carrot Top. <laughs> <laughs> I, I needed to experience that, but it didn't work out date wise. I am still mad that I did not get to go to Guy Fieri's restaurant because I wanted to put a Guy Fieri monstrosity in my body. Mm. <laughs> and I was denied the opportunity. Did I'm you sad. ever like, because even at the airport, they got slot machines. They do, yeah. They're, they're fucking everywhere. Yeah. Um, con- convenience stores, yeah. And went into. I, I guess they're not called Max Milks. I get Seven Eleven. Yeah. Snakes. I don't, and... I don't even think they're called Max Milks in Canada anymore. I think Seven Eleven <laughs> just bought them out. All right. Pedro, did they have a? Had, had, did they ever have casinos in Porto? Yeah, uh, no? they're, they're very, very regulated. Unlike here, where you walk three steps into Cambridge. And it's like gambling shop. That, gambling that's shop. not gambling. <laughs> Listen, you, the, dude, they, they give you tickets, Pedro. It's not money. <laughs> is is, is, yeah, is no, there like, like, ooh, there's like a, a betting counter for like horse races and whatnot. Then there's another gambling shop immediately next to it. It's like, huh? Okay. <laughs> I, I was going to ask, is there is like a European Vegas, but I guess it would be like Monte Carlo or something like that. Or I think that's less Vegas and more. Everybody in the UK dreams about vacationing in Vegas. <laughs> this there's is a not, lot of people this is not go wrong. there specifically for that. Yes. They're like, they're, they're, it's like the life thing of like, at some point we need to take a holiday and go to Vegas. It, it's, it's, it's like those dudes who like have an overwhelming urge to go to Japan and get like mm. really sad until they go to Japan. Sure. And then they come back and they're like, it wasn't that great. What is the, uh, what, uh, the Riviera? The, the Mayan Riviera? The, the French Riviera? Like some oh. there? I don't know. Where did they go in the... Uh, Monaco? Monaco, thank you. Gambling. <laughs> yeah, <Monaco. laughs> not, not for us poorest. That's where yeah, the riches no. go. Also, is that going to get us in trouble from being in the recording? <laughs> what? No. 
<laughs> this team key. No, I'm good. Okay. This like, is... <laughs> somebody's going to yoink that. Like, I, I have a billion grip combat racing keys. Like, I'm not even joking. I do. I bought a, like, a gang of them. All right. Speaking of gangs of them, uh, we're going to gang of them right out. See, perfect segue, ladies and gentlemen. Smooth as butter. I thought you were going to throw some gang signs, and I was, no. was going to be. <laughs> Listen, you just. Where's my song, dude? Um. <laughs> <laughs> You you don't like my Gangnam style. I get it. Ladies and gentlemen, on that bomb show, you can always catch us right here on Twitch. 8.30 Eastern. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Standard moon time. <laughs> Come check us out. Twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Hang out and chat. If you're a patron, hop in an hour beforehand. Check out the pre-pre-super shows. And where uh, we had an impromptu version of that on uh, Thursday in our Discord. Because Cornflakes showed up and we had to settle some shit. Find me on Twitter, on X, at, uh, at Vinstone, and uh, I'm on Interfacing Linux, if you want the forums there, and uh, mass.linuxteamcast.com. I'm just at Vin. I'm Jordan. I'm representing the east side. Is that is that the right side? I'm so I'm, I'm so very white. I don't know what the hell and I'm Rod. doing. Yeah. Fo- fo- follow me on Mastodon at, mas- at uh, Frojo at mass.linuxteamcast.com, Frojo at bsky.app, or at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Ah. Hey, sexy human. <laughs> I don't know. I just, uh, now I have Gangnam Style in my head, and I blame Ven. You can find me at unaccounted for uh, at LinuxGameCast.com. That's mass.linuxgamecast.com. There's a little bit of a subdomain missing there. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the social network that I'm in. Follow you can't me. wait, man. Uh, Netflix has optioned our social network moving. It's going to be dope. <laughs> it's the Google Plus movie. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's just 90 minutes of people crying because yeah. Google Plus shut down. <laughs> Time for some credits. Facts. Yeah. That's what I am, a sex burrito. Fill me with your beans, your sexy beans. All you advisors, Omegas, Artheran, our executive producers too, Bob Ramp, Scott, Atomic, Mike, Tomaz, Dave, Eshep, Ian, Kurnucky, 1-2-3-4-5-6, Aplo, and Drummer, and, you know, run a train on me, Super Desto, MT, Glorious Echo, and Turbo Tree Slot. I don't know anymore, man. And the sea monsters and the uh, mild uh, a seizure there. Renoro, Rider X, Makina, Trudgy, Veritanu, the Justin, Darkwing, Sissim, P, Denzing, Joe, the Kresny, Ogi One, Frostclaw, the Death Notes, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Rene, Leonardo, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom, Do That Wide, Stephen B, Beck, Dodger, Zeno, ah, Rue, Turnover, I missed. <laughs> breathe, damn you. Breathe. All of our fine, upstanding cannibals. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox, New Orleans, Noctilus, Johnny, Shep, Give it a try. You know it. DSN, Joe, Aromatic, Devin, of course, Kai, Joe, right. Thank you. You're all fine, upstanding cannibals. Ladies and gentlemen, until next week, get out there and uh, cover yourself in coconut eliteness. We'll be watching Scratch and Sniff Maximum Edition glide-ish. next week. Tune in live. You've been entirely too scrumptious. You've been nutted. You put the cocoa in the nuts, baby. <laughs> Down to fire, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Five dudes.